Okay, welcome back. This is part two of our lecture um, talking about the transition from the late Roman Empire, early Christian art, all the way to the Gothic. And so when we last left off, we were talking about uh, Romanesque and that there's a slight difference from these early Christian churches, right, where um, they're lifting up to um, a, uh, a, you know, a, um, a flat ceiling and the the columns hold up uh, perfectly circular archways um, but there's a slight difference from there to there the, those same two premises are true right the ceiling is still flat and um, the columns are still holding up by uh, circular archways but there's a little bit of just a difference in the 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 raising up the height of the whole space, the verticalness of the space. There's a difference of the complexity of the back space at the at the transept, and and so we see in this early um, Romanesque, we see kind of a connection to those early Christian uh, churches, as well as a connection to what does come later. So here's a, an example of um, a late Romanesque church, uh, Saint Sernin. Um, and I'm using kind of like a fish-eyed lens view to give you a sense of the whole space. So you can kind of see there's the, the transepts going down on either side. And the, the center now is being held up by a barrel vault, right, which is ribbed here. And so we see certain qualities that are, um, that will eventually become part of the Gothic. We see, however, in the transepts, we actually see groin vaults. Right? Not quite a Gothic groin vault, but something like Gothic groin vault. And in fact, some of these um, arches here in these groin vaults are some are circular, but some are actually slightly pointed. Another uh, feature that will become very important in the development of the Gothic. And in the Romanesque, by this point, we have this real balance between these two kind of tendencies. One tendency, when we get to the lecture on architecture, you'll hear about this a lot more. One tendency is the desire for architecture to communicate the movement of weight downward, to make us really believe in that this architecture can hold this weight, to look solid, essentially, and to look like it's doing its job. And the other is for architecture to lift up, to create a sense of weightlessness, to create this raise of the ceiling to feel almost magical, as if it doesn't, as if, as if it shouldn't be able to go up that high. These two kind of aesthetic ideas are um, somewhat potentially in conflict, but in the late Romanesque, somewhat in balance. But when we get to the Gothic, we will see that the, the raising up and the weightlessness issue is going to become the more important uh, point. Here's another, um, here's another uh, part from Saint Sernin. And you can see more clearly the, the groin vaults in some of these passageways along the side, some of these aisle passageways and transit passageways. And then we get to, um, to the Gothic. And I'm not going to go all the way to, to the late, late Gothic. Um, Chartres wasn't the first Gothic cathedral, but a relatively early Gothic cathedral. And, um, but uh, it is truly um, one of the greatest. It's a gorgeous work of art, uh, a treasure for the world. And you can see there's a difference here. Now that we have this kind of fluid combination of uh, pointed arches, right, combined with groin vaulting, but groin vaulting that is not just in simple, um, you know, uh, uh, right angle intersections, but groin vaulting creating all kinds of different sort of intersections, right? Um, and then that opens up the space a little bit, makes the difference between what's the aisle and what's not the aisle a little bit more, a little bit less, a little bit more fluid. And um, so in the Gothic, we have um, all of those elements, the pointed arches, the ribbing, right? All of these elements that we have seen in smaller degrees in the Romanesque all come together to now start to create um, spaces that are all about this lift upward and this sense of um, weightlessness. And the building is no longer really communicating its sol solidness, this, its ability to hold this weight. We almost just kind of accept it. Um, 
here's a view of Chart from the exterior. And I don't think actually I have another Gothic cathedral. Um, when we get to architecture, I think I'll have um, at least uh, one view from Rouen. And um, so besides architecture, so it's through the story of architecture that I'm really kind of pointing out this kind of continuity, the sense that um, from all the way going back to the end of the Roman Empire and the early Christian art of the, of the Roman Empire, all the way through to the Gothic, there is kind of a continuity of, of building ideas and continuity of aesthetic ideas. We don't see that as clearly in pictorial art, in part because um, for a large portion of the medieval period, pictorial art was primarily in books, and or at least we don't have really many examples of panel paintings and, and wall paintings and canvas paintings of, of those centuries. But by the time we get to the Gothic, we see a return to large scale um, wall paintings and panel paintings, and we have a new art developing. If you remember what I said earlier about Roman art, it's often in painting that we see the greater amount of um, inventiveness and a willingness to try new conventions because it's in the it's in painting where um, the artists have to build on you know with the least amount of uh, precedent right because paintings don't last as long or at least um, not until the invention of oil painting did paintings last more than you know like a couple of hundred years especially if they're not taken well care of so um, here's a duccio that I think does a really good example of representing the art the pictorial art of the uh, of the late Gothic and here's some sculpture uh, we've already talked about um, the well of Moses by Klaus Sluter once when we were talking about the issue of freestanding versus not freestanding and it's a beautiful piece and I think it also really does represent and I think it kind of should put to rest any kind of sense that medieval art was um, was unsophisticated, right? Because this is this is just a beautifully carved piece, beautifully conceived as part of a space, part of architecture, very well thought out, very intelligent, right? Um, but uh, at the same time, very much reflecting the values, the aesthetic values of its time. Okay, I think that is the last slide. That is okay uh, next I'll be covering the um, I'll be covering architecture the art medium for unit 4 All right thank you